honorable audience. Before we dive into the main event, I would like to invite Dr. Fitria Nor Anisadewi as the Assistant Director of International Collaboration and Networking Board to deliver her opening remarks. Dr. Fitria, then is yours. Um, thank you very much, uh, Karin, as the MC. So, uh, Honorable uh, Professor Turia, all the speakers, Professor Vesna, and Professor Andrea. So, uh, thank you very much for being here. And of course, uh, good morning and assalamualaikum warahmatullahi uh, Good day to everyone, uh, all participants, whether you're here offline in this room or uh, online, uh, watching from wherever you are, uh, you know, via Zoom meeting. So uh, I'm here on behalf of our director, Director of Global Connectivity, Dr. Eva Andreini, who unfortunately cannot be here due to the fixed schedule, but she extends her warmest regards and warmest welcome to our speakers as well as our moderator, Mr. Surya, and thank everyone for uh, supporting uh, IPB and providing this, what I believe would be a very important and very insightful lecture today. Uh, the topic of remote sensing and smart agriculture in general, I would think. So, um, I also would like to thank uh, Professor Kunan as the uh, host, of, if you will, uh, of the um, what do you call it, like exchange or um, guest uh, uh, lecturers program for inviting uh, both of you, Professor Desna and Dr. Leon from Zagreb, Croatia, all the way from Croatia to World War II. We really appreciate this. Wonderful collaboration um, between yourselves as well as our faculty members here um, in IPB. So, um, for the audience here, for the students, they are coming from various backgrounds, as I told you. So, um, we open this uh, to as much or as many uh, IPB students as possible, and which I understand they come from various backgrounds into physics, soil science, uh, agriculture, uh, agricultural technology. Uh, and various others. Um, so it's really uh, forestry as well and environment. So they're coming from various backgrounds, and which I think emphasize how um, many IPB students are very much interested in learning about anything related to smart uh, technology or smart approach uh, and supporting sustainability and environment in general. So I am not a, by any means expert in remote sensing or chartography, I was even like, oh, chartography, what does it mean? So, but, um, but I believe this would be very much uh, important knowledge, I think, for all of us, especially our students. And IPB has been very interested and very much committed in, uh, in trying to support like uh, smart uh, technology or what we call it now is uh, IPB 5.0, in which we try to incorporate um, smart technologies or IOTs, uh, anything basically related to digital technology and basically technology in general to, to support our research, our education, and our community services. So I think it's very important for our students to be exposed to this kind of topic so that they know um, the future, I guess, uh, on how this technology can be uh, utilized for various tech, uh, various um, fields, including agriculture and environment in general. So I think uh, with that, uh, again, I would like to appreciate our thanks and our appreciation to speakers, Professor Vesan and as well as our moderator, Professor Julia. And I wish everyone uh, today a very fruitful uh, lecture and discussion. And I think everyone will enjoy this. And I hope you, I hope you uh, enjoy the remaining uh, rest of your days or weeks here in Bogor and can enjoy ITV and Bogor. So with that, thank you very much, everyone, and may you all have a fruitful uh, discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for officially opening this event, Dr. Kitia. Ladies and gentlemen, next on, I would like to inform that the discussion session will be led by our outstanding moderator, a senior lecturer from Faculty of Agriculture, Professor Surya Danakarya. Now, Professor Surya is a professor at the Department of Soil and Land Resources, Faculty of Agriculture, IPB University. His research interests include landscape multifunctionality for, op for optimizing local ecosystem services using transdisciplinary approaches. Now, before we invite Professor Surya to the stage, 
I would like to encourage all of you to actively engage with our speakers during the Q session following each of the presentation. Your questions and insights are an integral part of this event, and we, and we obviously look forward to a lively discussion today. And also, before we begin, let us extend our heartfelt gratitude to the University of Zagreb for collaborating with us and making this event possible. Their commitment to education and research excellence is truly commendable. Therefore, without further ado, as we already have Professor Surya here with us today, I would like to invite Professor Surya to the stage. Your Excellency, please. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, I just would like uh, to welcome last year all uh, participants in the school and uh, as well as uh, participants in uh, the Zoom uh, group. Thank you uh, for attending this talk. Uh, today we, we are very thankful to have an opportunity to host a uh, two speaker from uh, the University of Zagreb, Croatia. Professor Andrea And thank you very much for uh, coming all the way from uh, Chakrat to Bogor. Yeah. I hope uh, you will like uh, Bogor very much. But be careful with spicy <laughs> <laughs> foods, yeah, need adaptation. So, okay. so uh, today, uh, Professor Pesna uh, will give all uh, our smart cities, uh, smart environment, smart agriculture, and followed by uh, Professor Andrea Rosensi at Kumaritari and Mining. But before we listen to the talk, uh, I just would like to highlight. Good Kulokite from Professor Festa. Uh, I will not uh, read all. Yeah. I just would like to highlight uh, some uh, point. Uh, Professor Festa graduated in 1993 at the Faculty of Geodesy in the University of Zagreb, the field of cartography, and took her PhD in the field of cartography. and. And SDI, it should be national uh, special data infrastructure. Yeah, special data infrastructure. The set of booty in Jagger in 2010. Uh, from the is uh, courses, cartography, thematic cartography, geo uh, visualization, spatial orientation and perception of the environment and practical cartography and other concept of spatial data organization and research. It, uh, I think uh, MCC also involved in any uh, project. Uh, and she published four books already, uh, 80 scientific and professional papers in the field of cartography. As a application. Now uh, we uh, go directly to Professor Andrea uh, uh, CV. So, Professor Andrea Katalik uh, graduated in 1997, still young, <laughs> with a topic from field of photogrammetry. Uh, and then uh, his field of activity and expertise are emphasizing in particular data vision and implementation of multi criteria analysis in the of sensing method. So, Andrea is a national representative of Council for Remote Sensing and the Croatian Academy of Science and Arts. He, uh, as here, Consil, the representative of Croatian Geodetic Society in the ASTRS, I think uh, some of you know this institution, the Minister of Science and Education of the Republic of 
Croatian Oil or Croatian representative to the Commission expert subgroup. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, and then now we uh, invite our guest members to give the uh, result, please. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to be. It's my pleasure to be here uh, today with you, with all uh, participants online. And uh, for the beginning, I want to thanks to your professor, Professor Iskandar, uh, Professor Galina. Professor Vidya Manka and Professor Surya to invite us to host us uh, here at your uh, university and the uh, For uh, my first presentation, I prepared a few slides about our uh, faculty and our university. And I will start with that just to broken ice and uh, uh, introduce uh, our uh, faculty. Uh, we are here in the frame of Erasmus Mobility uh, for whole week and Erasmus Plus Mobility um, for exchange uh, teaching staff, uh, University of Zagreb and the University of uh, IPT. Uh, this is just uh, the basic information about my colleague and me. Uh, as Professor Soria said, uh, my colleague is expert in remote sensing and photogrammetry, and I'm from chair of cartography. Uh, university of Zagreb is the oldest university in Croatia, established in uh, 1669, and uh, before Few years we have a big university, big hundred fifty years old. We have thirty four faculty and one university uh, study. And um, in the frame of the University of Zagreb is uh, all scientific discipline include. We have only one university in Zagreb, but only one public university in Zagreb. Uh, education in all academic disciplines, and uh, we have uh, around 17,000 students and 10,000 staff. Uh, faculty of Geodesy, here is uh, our uh, faculty, you can see how it looks like, but uh, teaching ge uh, Geodesy was started in 19, uh, 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 eight uh, year um, in the frame of Forest uh, Academy in Zagreb. After that, uh, we are grow up, uh, transform into the Department of uh, Geodesy, and uh, move to Technical University. And in 1956, um, uh, this uh, Technical University split in the faculty from. Uh, for uh, architectural civil civil engineering and geodesy. And after seven years, faculty of geodesy was established uh, like, uh, as all in the faculty of an institution. And I can tell that we are only one uh, faculty, independent faculty of geodesy in Europe. Uh, usually is uh, maybe in Europe, <laughs> I'm not sure, <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm sure for Europe because um, 
1962. So last year we have uh, 60 years. Uh, and what is it like uh, your EPB is uh, these days is your uh, university? And congratulations to you and to your professor for that. In this moment, uh, our faculty looks like uh, uh, this uh, this picture because it is under complete reconstruction uh, since we have uh, uh, big earthquake in uh, 2020 a uh, year. Now we are <laughs> refugees. <laughs> My colleague and me are in Indonesia, <laughs> and other colleague is moved to other moment. This is Jack, sorry. Uh, but no, we, are waiting, <laughs> we are waiting to total reconstruction uh, our building, and it expects maybe to the two to three years will be need for that. Uh, about faculty of geodesy, we have around 100 employers and 600 students. Uh, and we have three, all three levels of teaching, uh, bachelor study of geodesy and the geoinformatics master study. Uh, when we split that to uh, direction, geodesy and geoinformatics separately, and postgraduate study, uh, specialistic and doctoral study, uh, and lifelong learning program. And we have, of course, teaching, scientific teaching, and professional project in, uh, in the frame of faculty. Um, Internal organization is uh, split within three institutes uh, for fly geodesy, institutes for geomatic, and institutes for cartography and photogrammetry uh, from where we are coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, each institute is split mm -hmm. as chair, we have 16 chair. By 16 chair, when we start to uh, this organization, we have uh, 16 full professors. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we have a research uh, cover in uh, geodesy, geoinformatics, astrophysics, and a related field. And we have a lot of uh, international, uh, national, and international uh, projects. Uh, here is just the logo of this project, but I can point it here on UNDDR, where is also IPD partner, and we are very happy for that. And hope to uh, this collaboration will be extended to some other project. Uh, just a few slides about Croatia. Uh, we are an independent country since 1991. Uh, the youngest EU, EU country, uh, we have big, important uh, anniversary 10 years. And uh, I don't know, did you know that Croatia is common for time? Uh, here is uh, like, like first types look like. Uh, Thai originally, we said, Croata, uh, from Croata, like uh, German word, Croatia. Yes. Uh, in the global picture, uh, you know, Indonesia is here. In Croatia, it is very, very, very small point here. <laughs> here. Uh, just to. Uh, yeah. Just to do some proportion, uh, we are 35 small, uh, times smaller in area from uh, or in comparison with Indonesia and 73 times less population. From. Uh, but we have a lot of nice uh, seaside, uh, more. Uh, 1,200 uh, Iceland and the very famous Galesnia. Keeps uh, shape uh, <laughs> like a card, and we are very proud for that. 
uh, also, I don't know if you know that we have the oldest city in Europe, that is Vinkotsi, my uh, city, and uh, it's old uh, more than 8,000 uh, years. Few famous uh, people from Croatia. I hope you know very well yeah. some of them. Of course, here is Nikola Tesla, uh, very famous inventor and engineer. Uh, Tesla was born in Croatia. Uh, Slavon Penkala, uh, he's born in Slovakia, but he lived in Croatia and he's inventor of the mechanical pen. And Marco Polo also is born in Croatia in one island, uh, Korčula. Uh, some famous people uh, from Croatia is also our uh, former uh, president, uh, president from Yugoslavia, which is very good friend from your uh, president, Sukarno. And of course, here is a lot of uh, uh, sports uh, men and uh, very famous uh, a football man. I know you know for Luka Modric, everyone knows for Luka Modric, or maybe Mark Fimic, uh, uh, he play in Jakarta. Uh, yes, we are totally crazy about football. <laughs> you know, especially after uh, World Cup in Russia and in Qatar last year. Okay, let's go. Start <laughs> this is just for interact uh, introduction ourselves. What? Ah, okay. My first topic is uh, my my topic is not first. <laughs> my topic is about smart cities, smart environment, and smart agriculture. Smart uh, city is very uh, inter interesting, uh, actual topic in uh, this uh, time. In, uh, and depends who are, uh, talk about smart city. Uh, in Croatia, we have one uh, sentence. Uh, uh, it depends on position. Smart city is topic for politician, for financial management, for inventors, for everyone. But what is this is uh, my content of this uh, presentation. Uh, simple definition of smart city is that smart city use digital technology and data to solve a range of problems associated with urban living, such as population density, air, uh, water pollution, waste disposal, and, uh, and uh, uh, else. Uh, if we uh, talk with some technological uh, Smart city uh, from technological point of view. A smart city use a te uh, digital technology to connect, protect, and enhance the lives of citizens. Uh, IoT sensor, uh, video camera, social media, and other input act uh, uh, providing the city operator and citizen with constant uh, break uh, feedback so they can make important decision. A uh, global view about smart city is that smart city technology uh, uh, is the technology intensive city 
with sensor everywhere and highlight efficient uh, public services. And of course, a city uh, that uh, cultivate a better relationship between the citizens and government, leveraging but available technology. Uh, for me personally, this second is much uh, important uh, things related to smart city is citizen uh, is communication between citizen and government. And of course, politicians uh, said that smart cities place where traditional network and service are made more efficient with the use of digital digital technology uh, digital solution for the benefit and of its habitants and business. A smart city goes beyond the use of digital technology for better resource and use and less emission. Uh, what's this important for smart, smart city is a lot of sensor which we can use to smart industry, smart security, smart energy, uh, smart home, smart mobility, uh, and of course smart government. But important for me, for uh, as cartographic, is that smart city uh, the sharing data is not limited only to to city itself, but, but also include business, citizen, academic sector, private sector, and other, uh, other sector to increase understanding and economic benefit. The smart agriculture, you are very good in this, this topic. Um, Smart agriculture is management concept focus on providing the agricultural industry with infrastructure to leverage and advance the technology. Uh, this including big data, the clouding, the internet of things and everything related to uh, agriculture. Uh, what is inter internet of things? You know, uh, this is agri sector, automatic and analytic technology to modern agro, uh, agriculture. The most common uh, IoT application in smart agriculture is a sensor-based uh, system for monitoring crop, soil, fields, livestock, uh, storage facility, or uh, basically any important factor that uh, influence the agricultural production, production, a smart agriculture, vehicles, drone, and related uh, vehicles, connected uh, agriculture space such as smart greenhouse uh, or other. Uh, for there is data anal uh, analytics, uh, visualization, and managed system, and of course predictive modeling and planning for agriculture. The benefit of this Internet of Things is, of course, for farmers, is data, uh, live data that works to you, to, to uh, get much uh, uh, benefit from our data, which we said control uh, over the risk. This is important in this uh, time of climate changing, automatization and efficiency, and better produ uh, products uh, quality of uh, uh, better products. For smart city, is important things with smart cities. Without smart, uh, this is uh, the most important uh, part of smart city. Uh, without smart cities, then I think uh, don't have smart cities, smart agriculture, or anything else. 
Hot is smart citizen, which smart citizen is a digital literate person that take advantage of technology in order to engage in smart city environment. For smart city, uh, smart, for smart uh, citizen, uh, for us as a teacher, it's important digital transforming the educational system. Digital technology has become a social necessity to ensure education as basic human right, especially in the world expressing more frequently crisis and conflict. During the COVID pandemic, countries without sufficient uh, ICT infrastructure are well uh, rescued digital learning systems, super and uh, graded education disruption and learning losses. Uh, I read somewhere that 30% uh, uh, kids, uh, students, in the world, thirty percent in the world, global, uh, lose basic educational, uh, uh, basic educational uh, during uh, COVID pandemic because they don't have uh, 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 quality uh, infrastructure for teaching. So uh, it's necessary to support use of digital, digital technology in uh, assessing educational opportunity. And in order to uh, achieve this goal, it's necessary to work on development of digital literature and digital competence with focus on student, but also in focus uh, on teacher, on us, because digital technology are rapidly uh, growing and changing. And we are also a little bit uh, all to catch everything what the day uh, bring to us. And then we talk about uh, uh, smart cities. Also, is uh, important uh, resilient cities. Uh, resilient cities are cities that could absorb, recover, and prepare for future stock, even economic environment, social, uh, social and institution. Uh, we have four area to drive uh, resilience. This is economic, where you exclude diversity number of industry, dynamic economic to, to, economic to generate growth, condition allow in innovation to take place, and people have access to employment, education, uh, service, skill training, and so on. Uh, for governments, we have, uh, we have a clear leadership and management, strategic and integrated approach are taken by leaders. Public sector has the right skill, and government is open and transparent. This is... Uh, very important if we want to uh, uh, have uh, communication with smart citizens. They want to know uh, everything related to the city. Uh, society is inclusive and uh, cohesive. Citizen network uh, in the communication are uh, very active. Neighborhood is safe and citizens enjoy healthy life and environment ecosystem is sound and diverse infrastructure can meet basic needs adequate natural resources available and coherent policy over land use uh, Sustainability, smart city, green city. Uh, it's a city that has embraced uh, the dual goal of climate change and quality of life of residents. Quality of life 
is a common measure a self uh, reported hepatitis of the citizen of this city. And smart city technology, typical plays a uh, part in this context. Self sufficient self. Uh, smart city uh, achieve, uh, should achieve in five categories this is power, food, water, data, and secure economy. Uh, I found uh, this free slide uh, related to evolution of smart city by uh, uh, Professor Sheridan Tasuno. I don't know, did you know for him? But he said that uh, three uh, level, three steps of smart cities, smart city uh, version 1.0. The inferno of surveillance, uh, ticketing, and automatic pollution. This smart city is born from tragedy after uh, uh, attack, and the city and other city uh, installed a 24.7 uh, surveillance camera and uh, augmented uh, reality to protect public space uh, through public-private partnership driven by city and corporation. Uh, this is uh, city smart city number one, smart city number two, uh, start from uh, since uh, uh, Paris Accord, many cities are adding sustainability policy in their data driven the smart city program. IoT sensor and IE are being uh, deployed and managed to reduce traffic, use energy, and carbon emission. Many of those programs have been uh, successful in planting uh, and monitoring climate uh, policy. And Smart City 3.0 is Paradise Green. Equality city, the ideal uh, for uh, all city official citizens and businesses is the green city that is open, fair, uh, safe, and equitable. Uh, since uh, okay. yes, yes. Uh, and for a uh, few slide, a uh, few uh, my. Uh, Slide for end. Uh, some common developing smart city focus should be on better planning, better managing implementation of uh, uh, information technology or EOT, uh, climate change impact, uh, balancing resource, balancing finances and needs, and social aspect. Uh, we have also uh, Few takes uh, of smart city uh, in in Europe. We have uh, a smart city which uh, develop improving existing city into smart city like Amsterdam, which is uh, very very smart with a lot of uh, smart technology. We can uh, build a new smart city from scratch, like in Egypt or in. Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, transforming existing city into a resident of sustainability city and, and building sustainability city like the Dubai smart city. And for the end, I prepare uh, six uh, myths uh, about smart city. Uh, smart city are all about technology. What do you think is that true or false? False. Smart city are about a people. Technology is just simple enable its application. Smart city is only are only for big city. 
False, of course. In fact, 30% of smart uh, city projects are in area with pollution less than uh, 150,000 or less. Side is not connected. You need a branch of money to do smart city project. <laughs> False also. There are so many uh, ways to approach smart city project because out of the, the, the private sector, corporations, small business centers are excited to work with city leaders. Smart city project required again blending age. Also false. Uh, to use technology and smart practice to deliver government service more efficiently. Smart city project can uh, only be facilitated and executed by government leaders. Of course, it's all. Here is also it's helpful if we have active government uh, and. Uh, it's uh, good to all stakeholders and smart city project requires a city to own their own uh, infrastructure. It's also false. The era of the smart city is all about partnership across mm -hmm. sector, pub, uh, sectors, public, private, non profit, and academic sector. And just to Nice picture, but we can ask your, uh, yourself. Uh, did you uh, would you li uh, like to live in this city? <laughs> this is by uh, Futuristic Smart City proposal. First, uh, the line in Saudi Arabia, the project will cost uh, 500 billion dollars. Uh, Second place is Pelosa in United States, uh, 5 million. Uh, it's aimed to house 5 million people by 2050 in this city. Biodiversity city in Malaysia. I think you already heard for this one. Maldives floating city. And for the end is Aqua City, Senegal. Uh, my, I'm personally, uh, 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 sure. real uh, with this picture, but I'm not sure would, would I like to live there and spend all life in this city. No, and, we don't know where the taste. Yes. <laughs> And just to summarize in this presentation, people migration to city is trend, which will uh, last due to many mentioned factors, but especially because climate changes. We are aware about this. Uh, development of city in the future, and the future city should or must be smart, whatever exactly this time for. Uh, smart city development is much more complex than anticipated, and uh, therefore, uh, stepwise approach seems uh, safer than mega project. And of course, what does it mean for education uh, change and uh, uh, change all, te all technology? Uh, we also need to include everything. This in education in all in all level, uh, it's not important to establish education only for smart city. Now we need to capacity building in all uh, our population. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, and thank you for giving us highlight uh, regarding the digital technology, smart city, 
So I don't know as far as that's a we uh, IPP also uh, right now locate uh, many resources to develop uh, smart agriculture, but I think the, the principle is uh, in similar uh, to uh, mention there is the pollution. We are now at a uh, grown maritime 4.0. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, as I mentioned, how do you see it? Um, lot of uh, sources to go to this data. And, but it is uh, very nice to hear uh, the, the myth yeah, that you yeah. are working because when we discuss about uh, smart uh, digital technology, we always think about infrastructure is very expensive, but you uh, mentioned that it should not always be very expensive. And, so that always uh, be difficult to put in touch with the people. So, uh, please uh, prepare your question, uh, but uh, we go first to the same presentation of uh, small idea, and then uh, uh, you can ask the question. Hello everyone. Um, you see now, I will talk about something completely different about uh, stupid citizens who want to go to war and kill each other. So I don't know. It's maybe not uh, in for such a presentation, but I deal with that with so 21, 22 years because the Croatia went from their homeland with. Uh, a building of uh, 30, uh, 13,000 uh, square hectare of contaminated uh, with mine. So we are the one of uh, 62 and country in the world which contaminates with mine. And uh, Croatia sadly, or maybe it's uh, it's uh, in front of uh, other. Uh, States in in uh, that issue because we have the problem and our scientists are also want to, to, to help our young country and uh, help solve that problem. So I already said the motivation for that at moment from Croatia from uh, 1991 to 1995 for year of war and uh, our. My action center in Croatia, review, define, and mark all the suspected hazardous area. This suspected hazardous area is an area which uh, they assume they it's uh, contaminated with mines. So uh, after defining the suspected hazardous area, we need to clear that land, but uh, thirteen. Thousand hectares is a uh, large area, and defining of that area was uh, very restricted because the people coming in their first, their first homes and that region need to be larger than existing, existing are because of very using of the, the beast. And all that area are marked with the sign. Mine and contamination because the, no one knows, no one wants people to go in that areas and uh, burn by, by landmines. So uh, I need to mention that uh, project because I work also in the two work this five project in uh, 2001 and uh, one fifty seven project in 2000. Well, it's a project about mining money, 
Yeah, maybe it's good to say what is the Ponari in the mining. Ponari in the mining is the mining in which we don't want to have a hold because the uh, army doesn't ask him to just send the military and send him to use the army. How many victims doesn't matter, just use the army. In monitoring the mining, it's uh, opposite. We don't want to have it. <laughs> we don't have, have uh, casualties, so the science <laughs> wants to, like I said, to help our country and to find some area in mine and uh, reduce some area of the, the big mines, especially the hazardous area. The advanced intelligence and the signal support system also is uh, some example which we wish people can do with the small amount of money. So we didn't have uh, a large budget and we could just uh, camera camera sets uh, so not professional but everyday camera set <laughs> helicopters and collect the images from the depth of the spectacle of the area. So uh, idea what's this system is not sorry is there of that system is not defined mine per se. It's uh, find the area <clears throat> in which mine could be. So for that purpose, I don't want to do it, uh, everything because the information of mine presence and the information indicators of mine absence is the first things which someone needs to establish if, if he wants to deal with the, the mining because we have today sophisticated radar and uh, dogs, whatever, but every area today also will be cleaned with a machine or with a stick. Nothing of that uh, tools doesn't use in the uh, demining. Those tools can also be used in uh, checking. After the mining, you can release the dogs and to go with a uh, the uh, radar stick and checking if something there was reminding today and for 100 years, 200 years ago, will be, I think, with the machines or with the stick because you are the mine and I give you the X, Y, and Z coordinate of the mine. Do you go to get filled with the stick or with the GPS? <laughs> so, all kind of uh, stuff because uh, it, uh, region of uh, science, it's uh, very uh, convenient for uh, scientists of uh, radar technology or image processing. They have much idea, but only few idea are lived uh, in planetary mining. So, first and the most uh, critical one is defining the list of indicators. You can assume that for uh, any other reason, maybe for malaria, you need to know what was that. It was where they are. So the settlements are the flows with, with the, that uh, area or is the river in the shadow of the river or in the city source. So uh, you or someone can establish the list of indicators in the city. So I need to opposite to rest, but for me, it's not smart. What it is not smart, that stupid things, because the people are smart and people do the codes and the programs, which and citizens are smart also. And uh, that's for me, it's called the smart thing in the uh, city or in the new TV. It's a stupid thing I feel you know, about new TV, and I need the ways to, to understand him. So indicators of, like I said, it's because the, uh, we don't try to find mine, but we try to find some object 
from the scene in the very uh, surface to which and uh, some experts conclude that to be kind of that uh, all our minds like change like bumper like shelters for ammunition shelters for I shall later the exams so the first thing is the only thing we say we need to do if we want to uh, proceed with some methods is to establish the list of indicators, whatever you call it, mentally demining the uh, forest here, whatever. Because uh, little or small list of things you can just see on, on the image. You can see those floods or uh, fire or something you cannot see about the thing. But if you have a thermal image, maybe you can see some day or week before that there's something to the heaven below the, the ground or something like that. This is just uh, one exact example of this. So the texture of the mind support for acquired airborne and space for multi sensor imagery. Like I said before, every uh, mind action center first needs to establish or define the area which are contaminated with mines. After that, they just need to set the dirty miners in that area or can do this one, acquire the information, additional information from the depth of uh, that area to assume well, if there are mines of uh, food or not. <laughs> so for that, we would also uh, contextual data Formalist expert knowledge, quantity training analysis, because uh, if you have some change in uh, really, it's even the same if you have change in the fields, because the idea of uh, mines in front of the trench is the same, the uh, soldier trench. So it's good to uh, lie down the mine if you could see them from the trench. So in the valley, you can. Line down that mine maybe on four, four, 400 meters because military assume that on that kind of uh, dist uh, distance, a good shot can provide uh, that mine. If you line mine in the hills, someone or soldier can see how, how far from the trench they would uh, see that uh, they feel it. <laughs> Uh, I'll talk about later. And <clears throat> this is the philosophy. I, I have the SS technology because everyone uh, starts in uh, my action center. They need to define some area or they need to give us a uh, special or, <coughs> or general uh, requirements. After that, see an analysis, do the analysis of the images which they have in a mind information system. It's mind information system, it's the information from the interview with the people who come back in this area or collecting information from the war maps, from the, some the books about uh, wars which writing by generals or some actor of the war. After that, when uh, we analyze all the data and uh, when we find out what data are missing, go to the multi sensor and multi airborne image position. I don't uh, mention here much uh, satellite image because on satellite image you can see the you cannot see the bumper of big satellite image, which are free of charge. 20 by 20 meters or lamps of 30 by 30, you cannot see the, 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 such kind of uh, object. But we are put all, like I said, that uh, RGB sensor, sensor, thermal sensor, and uh, high temperature sensor put on helicopter and collect the information from 1,000 or 800 meters or something like that because we need to have the good geometry to find that kind of uh, indicate of the object. 
after collecting additional data, might see interpreters interpret all the data from the MIS and uh, additional uh, collected data. After that, or within that uh, process, uh, they or we use the decision support system and uh, get with the results. I show you the results of on the end, it's the uh, uh, danger map. And uh, some map, the, the thematic map of the area which we assume the center of consensus the mind. So, all of this we, or commentary defining that call a uh, non technical survey. Why non technical? Because we don't have speaking in the field. With the area, we just flow uh, 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 above that uh, area and collect the imaging, and that is the remote and collecting the uh, image store information without stick with the with the object. But it's, today it's also of course why how you can uh, quantify your results if you don't have anything to date. The, 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 the real remote sensing is uh, it's sensing on Mars because that's uh, some kind of uh, we can collect the images and do the map with the digital or photo maps or something like that and analyze data for set data with artificial sensing and on on other so whatever it assume you cannot argue with that. We are not on Mars, so that is really remote sensing. But remote sensing, if you want to apply for something, you need to have the information for calibration and for COVID assessment. Because of that, I said later, uh, we have information in the MIS, but we don't know how true or how expert they, they, they are because. Uh, mindful records is uh, some records in which uh, military guys put the name of the unit, the name of the head of the unit, and the number of the mine, and they uh, show the scheme of the position of the mine. And when we analyze that kind of document, we could be or need to be true. It's uh, only 69%. 69% of uh, this data we can use to uh, reconstruct the minefields from, from them. So 31%, we cannot uh, deal with them and we cannot find the uh, orient orientations or something like that. So every uh, data and every information for me, it's need to be checked before to go to the decision support system, non multi uh, criteria or uh, the interview. So, the that system is uh, very complex. So it's a good, you can see it uh, consists of three modules, one for analytical assessment, like I said, we need to assess. Every data which uh, go enter to our methodology module for data acquisition, it's a deep one, and the module for uh, data pre processing and processing because all that image we collect, we need to uh, do the two geometrical and radiometrical calibration because uh, we can use them. You can see the our cameras and uh, our torpedo. We say that it's an uh, orange one, and with this torpedo, all that kind of uh, sensors we put in. And we do uh, all uh, uh, image or data collection with the MI8 uh, helicopter in the A and uh, some Gazelle helicopters. Also, do with the drone and uh, satellite or blimp. We try with, with the blimp, but uh, 
we couldn't get a stable flight with that, and we just put that aside. Satellite images, of course, because in satellite image we can uh, have a image of when we uh, the position of uh, all information and we can put satellite image beyond and see, like I said, the bigger picture because of the terrain. You can see where the terrain is, where it is, where it's uh, now, where it's uh, vegetation or something like that. That is thematic maps. So, maybe it's complex one. And list of indicators. It's uh, like this: uh, trenches and man-made and bunkers, river shores and main water level. Because uh, army can go to that uh, river shores and uh, uh, main water level and bridges. Including destroyed bridges, and we have uh, seen some destroyed bridges. We can assume and maybe some other mines uh, around uh, that bridge. So I now need to, to read all of this, but first, edge is something interesting. I, I show later. Ah. You can still now if we can see the uh, examples. Uh, you can see here something that's different, and also it's a thermal image. This is thermal one with the course uh, spatial resolution, of course, but also you can see something different in uh, the environment. And if we put some RGB image with the five centimeters. Uh, Spatial resolution, you can see the, the, the trench here. Also, in that picture, uh, you can see a lot of trenches, uh, shelters for tanks, shelter for men, shelter for ammunition. It's a very uh, uh, I forgot the other thing. So, very much indicators which we uh, can a little bit need to uh, delineate and put in the GIS. Also, can you see something here? This is the Redalus sensor, or oh, like I say before, it's a satellite sensor and sensors with the one meter. So it's not much, uh, it does not much information. Maybe you may see something in the, the other one, but if we use the image with the 10 centimeters, you can see the bunker one, two, and nine, also in the middle. So, and, uh, also, uh, that's uh, environment is very tough for that team's white because you have two places, just have uh, rocks in variety uh, times. And some vegetation and bumper is also rock. So it's a generation here with just two uh, class and we want more. We want to give the bunkers and cutting the with the human eye, it's okay. But if you have a hundred picture like this, it's uh, in some automatic. Also, it's uh, Daedalus and uh, this 10 6 meters image. You can see the position of every weapon on some kills, some kill, and the shelter for ammunition for uh, that weapon. Also, bunkers, dry walls, whereas shelters for areas so for soldiers or for techniques. Also, here, trench. Dry wall, so you get the picture what we uh, try to find because if we know the, the position where the trench look in front of that trench, some expert can say, I feel that can be the time. Maybe we try to pass them, so we need to go out, but that also uh, can be false because some. Units uh, can have a 
or three editions. So in between the publishers also can lay lay the mind and uh, just left uh, some tracks for going from one position to, to, to another. So just can this is very uh, educational. Uh, you can see the shelter for things and the walls, dry walls for the uh, ammunition and for the tea, which are uh, managed with, with the thing. So that is the year uh, 1999. It's uh, four years after war. So now you can see the picture uh, seven years ago. Uh, seven years uh, after. So did you see any of that? So vegetates, maybe you can see some uh, lines in the center and then on, on, on the right of edge, but that's because uh, but many times the mining uh, history or it's a very big matter in which time of the year because Croatia has four seasons, all four seasons it's, uh, summer, uh, winter, autumn, and spring. So it's uh, Relevant in what season we tried something. Uh, this is also one from 1999. You can see the edge of the forest, and seven years later, uh, you can see how the forest moved. So that's uh, really once more. You can see uh, this is not a deforestation, this is forestation. But this is the indicator that uh, never enter in that area in the seven years. That's also indicators for the expert uh, why didn't uh, no one didn't go there. Maybe they know or assume there are mines there. There's also broken house and uh, renovated house, it's an indicator of uh, mine access because it's a road, someone can. Uh, Came with that road and uh, get interview and uh, talk with that particular uh, and that small piece of uh, area can exclude from the suspected hazardous area. It's also uh, it's an uh, indicator of uh, land use. It's a uh, good one. We, we want to that indicator much more than the other. And when we glean out of our extract, all kind of information, the traditional information from the images, like this is the legend, it's a uh, river crossing, dominant heights, destroyed house, mine records, analysis of the confrontation zone, because uh, uh, both sides know in four years where the lines uh, were. So also in the mine information, uh, Center or in the mine information system, we have uh, that data and also the traces. And uh, just a uh, quick look on this on the top of the screen. Uh, this one, the green, is information which we have in uh, another MIS mine information system. The yellow one is information which we collect with the, our uh, new system. All that information go to the decision support system, and after that, like I said, we produce the proposal for uh, SHA reduction, so for uh, reduction of the area from expected hazardous area, or we propose for uh, produce the mine danger maps. How we do this? So, like I show you, with, with every indicator, we link uh, some buffer, but the buffer with uh, one side, not roughly around 300 degrees, but buffer from the one side with some indicators. It's a round buffer, like uh, accident or mindful backwards, yet, but trench bunkers or something like that. We need to. Uh, 
drove the one side of the process. So it's a line of position of uh, all the indicators. And uh, this is, like I said before, distance from indicator. You could see it is for, for trench from zero meters from the trench. The high, the uh, danger seeds start from uh, 50 meters because uh, it's stupid to place a new mine. Uh, two or three meters from the trench because if they blow up, they can uh, do some to the builder in the trench. So they put the, they lay down the line from 50 to 250 meters. That's the highest, that's the zone with the highest probability to uh, contaminate the, the mines. After 250, uh, also 50 meters for some. Um, or something like that, and the experts assume in that kind of terrain is uh, some hilly terrain. Uh, after 300 uh, meters, experts assume that the, the dangerous the degrees or no dangers after that uh, distance. So, like I said before, we did uh, this line will uh, we link, link the, the buffers and according to this we produce the end method that's the method with the buffers around all the indicators of online presence without any uh, weight but it's not the same to have the information about my record or start bridge but my records it's uh, Larger or mine accidents, they have a larger value in uh, the data fusion and multi uh, spectral analysis. So, after we give the weights to all indicators, we get the second one to be so the, the area with more red color is, is more dangerous than the colors with the uh, orange or red. And the CMAP is our uh, proposal for production. That uh, green areas, this method, we use the method, and we assume that that uh, area don't contain, contain mines. But I need to stress here uh, you can typically this is the word of uh, some spectacular area. The area without uh, red or yellow or red or uh, orange color, not free of mine. It's just this method and this system doesn't have any information that mine could be there. So, conclusion is uh, maybe it's uh, better to say, but uh, if you want, we produce some articles about that. You can. Uh, he, uh, you get that uh, presentation and you get that link, and also we write some uh, chapter in the book. So, if you want to have some better insight or some details about that, you can read about that. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you uh, very much, Andrea. It's very interesting uh, um, project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, we can apply more on your purpose. So, uh, you, you know, mind in, in Bahasa? No, no, tambang here. Oh, Pandogara. Yeah, Pandogara is uh, Indonesian translation on mind, <laughs> military uh, equipment during the war. We put some uh, mind. A strategy for war. Uh, so it is very interesting how you can use uh, ESS, yeah, uh, not to pinpoint uh, the location for individual mines, <laughs> because I think the mine probably uh, the size of the mine, uh, like this one. Or... Uh, no, we have a uh, smaller size, but they are different cases. So it's a uh, we assume or we see that so the. No, no point to, to, to uh, find the, the, the mine. 
uh, we have some problem with so also dealing with the, some uh, storage of my product load. And that's if, if you go out a uh, day or two after that, and that's uh, very sensitive to my mind when mine is on the ground. But we talk about uh, now we are in 2023, and the pressure still is something about 200 per kilometers. But that might lie down in 1991 and yeah. 1995. So we have speak here of uh, archaeology. It's on the timeline. <laughs> so uh, but, uh, in, in combination of knowledge in uh, GIS, I think that's also a more sensitive. Right, because uh, every uh, indicator of the finding it to the US yeah. in the United States in the area. And then it's only have a sense. Yeah. So, and also, sorry, I need to do a point here that uh, every uh, project we do with the experts from the next, we don't do on, on, on our hands. We go to the financial center in Croatia and ask what you need. What you need at the end of the day. Uh, when we get the results, we get them, well, like see on the pillars. Uh, every uh, decision about our results go from the minus. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we just can put like, like I said, proposal or this proposal for that. And they need to check out from now and then say yes, if that's true, that's possible. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Now the time for our discussion for question. Starting from this Please raise your hand on the uh, thing. Uh, do we have question? No. So we can start from here. Any question? Yeah, yes, please. And then thanks your hand. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for this, this opportunity. Uh, your presentation is so exciting. I have a question for the that you state that uh, in the myth for smart, smart city, we need to requ it requires a lot of money and it's false, right? And there is many creative ways to approach uh, approach smart city projects. Can you give me the Elaboration for the example of the smart of the uh, creative way application in Croatia for smart city and can be applicable in Indonesia. Thank you. Another question before we get to I can give you an um, explanation what I do with my skill. Uh, we uh, made a uh, movement. Uh, made movement. Usually, the movement is a very uh, comprehensive, uh, very expensive project. And in Croatia, it's obligatory. Uh, for city uh, which have uh, more than 100,000 citizens and the local government uh, make new uh, strategic investment every five years. So every five years is a long period in life of cities since now very often building some new uh, roads, new bridge, uh, new industrial uh, area facility, and so on. And um, with my student, I start from project uh, crowdsourcing the noise map, uh, where we use. Uh, uh, I start. I, what? 
Yes. 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 Y
area with the problem. Uh, uh, with the problem. Uh, as I said in the before, uh, official is made every five years. Sometimes we don't, uh, we, we, we have a time to wait next five years for a new uh, official net to see what uh, new bridge to bring uh, to citizens that, uh, that they uh, affect their health or something that bring a noise, uh, uh, new noise to, to life back. You can imagine how people will need for the current. Wow. Or sensors to put sensors on uh, power supplies, whatever. That's but the cost of cost. So that's a two way to, to put a million people in the car and every point get spread in the raster, or put the sensors on also in the town or some problematic area. Yeah. So uh uh, just to one sentence, what I want to say. We have a cheap uh, way to put some data, interesting for citizens, for local government, for NGA, for researcher. We need the data to uh, produce some analysis or some students. Or also, you can ask the government uh, where you can. Uh, put the tree in the room. And mm -hmm. years you put trees and for 10, 20 years, you have a better insight and the smallest temperature. It's also not very costly. It just ask where can we be. You know, you're very interesting. Uh, uh, I think, uh, yes, as you mentioned, that's not for me for this high. Uh, uh, Programming technique uh, to uh, solve a particular solution yeah, to this yeah. noise, or also air pollution or microclimate. <laughs> so, so many, uh, many interesting media. I think uh, we don't, uh, yeah, because uh, when we heard about the smart uh, agriculture studio, we always thinking that we need a very high uh, skill programming. Um, in high infrastructure, but as you mentioned, can just use uh, sensors or smartphone for it. Yes. Uh, this is the idea. Eh? This is why we call geo visualization. Eh? Yes, 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 visualization. So, what do you think was the smartest thing we saw in Bogor? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I cannot, you mean the, the, the what whatever you, whatever you, you, you can. Actually, uh, uh, there is already one uh, in our uh, smartphone uh, about the carpet jam. No, <laughs> the, the, the cart for yeah. parking on the stick. Ah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah. More clever thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so yeah. the plastic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, I just would like to ask oh, uh, from you but uh, until uh, what time? Uh, I think <laughs> one more question is okay. Okay, so we just uh, make this question because, uh, yeah, uh, we have time also. Uh, Ahmed, sorry, CDP, yeah. uh, the idea of uh, does this smart city concept of framework as a solution to pollution? The first Jakarta was a city with the ocean. So, so grass from the ocean. About about for uh, air pollution. Uh, yes, uh, smart city. What's your definition? <laughs> Yes, it should be, but uh, I'm not sure if, uh, exactly right now does have some solution, some, some idea, but yes, this is uh, idea of some smart city. Yeah. It, 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 it,
Yeah, so of course, that's the first one. Yes. Okay. So I think, uh, yes, uh, the, the, I think why it is sometimes uh, like uh, the, the one that you mentioned regarding the noise net is because it is uh, utilizing crowdsourcing. Yes. It's very important. It's very important. Yes. You don't need to pay people. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, if you uh, do, uh, if you want to launch some project with uh, crowdsourcing, it's uh, more most important how to motivate uh, yeah. people yeah. to yeah. join, to crowd, yeah. yes, yeah. to join, uh, <laughs> to support the project. Yeah. In this case, uh, I'm sorry, I use my students. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, they don't have opportunities. Yeah. Would I? Uh, would I uh, Yes, you should to do that for this uh, class, is it? But uh, yeah, this is the uh, problem with yeah. the motivation people to join. Smart right. class. Yeah. Smart smart class. class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's smart. Yeah. Okay, I think because of the time, I think we can uh, in this. Uh, I believe uh, there are still more questions, but. If uh, it is uh, very urgent, then we can reach out to the uh, director of Global Connectivity uh, Global, uh, as Kota or <laughs> Professor Pesna, and for this plus uh, particular project that you are interested <laughs> similarly to what uh, Professor Pesna and for Adrian, very similar. I myself. Uh, I find this very interesting. There are so many opportunities uh, using the sense of technology, sense of GIS, GSS. We can utilize all of them to solve the problem. Also, I, I believe in Indonesia, so many things that we can uh, use uh, to utilize these tools. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Kesta. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, yeah. yeah, thank you for all of you who have present in this room and also in some way. Thank you very much. And if we can post now, yeah, yeah, and uh, we can uh, close it now. But uh, we have some, yeah, okay. Uh, I think uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we have uh way of saying uh, many thanks for <laughs> your presentation. Uh, uh, yeah, we have here, I, think, I don't know what is inside, but <laughs> it must be very interesting. <laughs> and the certificate was for uh, Professor Pesca. Thank you very much. And uh, also uh, for uh, so, yeah, thank you very much for uh, nice presentation. Uh, and now the last item for uh, program today is taking picture. <laughs> it's important. Joint picture. Yeah, joint picture. Good. Let's do that.